Hello, Mosaic. I want to take a moment and welcome you to church. Uh, my name is Joe, and I'm one of our pastors here on the team. And, and this is my favorite time that we get to come together every single week, that we get to dive into the scriptures, that we, we get to have a conversation together, and we get to hear what God is sharing in our lives. And, and me and my wife, Rebecca, and our three kids, every single week we open up our house, and we have a Mosaic house. And it's my favorite thing that we get to be a part of because every week we get to meet new people and, and we get to like see God in a fresh way. And, and I just want to shout out all the people who are opening up their homes across the world in Mosaic Houses. Isn't it so beautiful that we can do life together? See, what I want to talk to you about for a few moments today is, is I want to talk to you about something that I, I feel like I have mastered in my life. I want, I want to talk to you about something that has become so common to me that it's as if it's the air that I breathe. And what I want to talk to you about for a few moments today is fear. See, I am a self-professed scaredy cat. See, there are so many fears in my life that, that I focus on and, and that have oriented around all that I do. And I wish it wasn't true, but I am way too comfortable with fear. How about you? And and there's so many moments in the scriptures that talk about our relationship to fear. And, and it's because it's a part of the human story that there are things that we all are afraid of. There are moments in our life when fear has too big of a place and a, and a marker in our life. And, and I feel like today, I just want to break some chains with you and with me where, where fear no longer robs us of our future, no longer robs us for the life that we long for. But what I know about us as humans is that we are really comfortable with this thing called fear. And, and here's how I know. See, there are over 500 known fears. 500. Like we are discovering new phobias every single day. And, and it's insane that you would think that we would have a limit to the things that we're afraid of, but we seem to keep bringing new things into our story. And you want to know what the top five fears are for all of humanity? Number five is cynophobia. It's the fear of dogs. Number four, agoraphobia. That's the fear of open or crowded spaces. Is that you? Number three, acrophobia. It's the fear of heights. I know that's a part of that. My heart is already beating outside of my chest. Number two, ophidiophobia. And that's the fear of snakes. See, there's like a time during quarantine when me and my wife got obsessed with Survivor the last few months, that we actually are having conversations like, like, should we do the show? Should we like audition? We have friends going, please go on Survivor. And, and there's a part of me that wants to do it and for the fun and for the relationship and, and the competition to win. But I gotta be honest, I'm terrified every time I think about it when I see a shot of a snake, like, I don't know if I can do it. Like I see a snake on a TV and I start to hyperventilate and, and that's the number two known fear in the world and has nothing when it comes to number one, and that's arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. There are so many fears that inhabit our world. There's so much danger that lies ahead, and, and it's as if we as humans have discovered that the danger isn't something that simply is out there, but a lot of times it's the danger that we find that lies inside of here. That we are fearful creatures, that we are terrified of the unknown. And, and there's moments in our lives that, that God has to have a new conversation with us because we're focusing on the wrong thing. See, I want to go together at a passage in Numbers, chapter 13, and and the backstory here is, is that there is a moment where the Israelites had been promised this land. And God told them that it's yours for the taking. And, and so what they do is they, they decide that we're going to send out spies to scope the land to see if it's what God said. And, and here's where we pick up in verse 26. It says, they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, 
and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. And we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we looked the same to them. What an incredible moment that we step into in the life of the Israelites. See, they're in this tense position where, where they believe that there's a land that had been promised to them. They believe that there was something ahead of them and their future was waiting for them. But, but there was a problem because when they sent the spies into the land, the reality of what it would cost them was directly in their face. And they had a choice to make. They had a decision. What would they focus on? And, and when we're talking about living a life where we're known by our fears or we're known by our faith, then there's some questions that we first have to ask ourselves. And, and the first question that, that we have to ask ourselves is, is, what do you see? Because when the, the spies go into the land, it was a question of what their eyes saw and what their hearts felt. And, and when we're talking about fear and faith, here's what you have to ask yourself. What do you see? Because when you're filled with fear, you focus on the problem. But when you're filled with faith, you focus on the promise. See, both are directly ahead of you. There's problems ahead of you and there's promise ahead of you. But what will you focus on? And I know far too often in my life, I have allowed myself to focus on, to hunker down on the fear, and I've missed out on the promises that God had laid out for me. So what are the choices that you need to make in your life right now? That you just need to shift what you see. You just need to shift what you experience. You just need to shift your perspective. And, and it may not change your circumstances, but it can change you. So if we go back to the beginning of this passage, it says, they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. And there they reported to them and the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. See, I want to pause here for a moment because this is so important. What, what happens here is they come back and they verify what God said, that this land does flow with milk and honey. Here is the evidence of it with the fruit, because here's why this matters. Because if God said it, it can be trusted. Because if God said it, it will be done. And, and God said there would be a land flowing with milk and honey. And guess what? There was a land flowing with milk and honey. See, how often in our lives has God told us something would be true? Has God told us something would be done, but we have only seen the problems and we missed out on his promise. See, I know there have been far too many moments in my life when I did not trust God for who he said he was. And, and I wonder for you, what, what moments are awaiting you in your future that, that you don't need God to remove the obstacles, you don't need God to limit the problems you just need to change what you see and you need to focus on his promise. And then in verse 28, it says, but the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and, and very large. See, what they saw was the struggle. What they saw was a battle that was bigger than them. What they saw was, was giants that increased their fear rather than increased their faith. I remember there was this one time when I was at home by myself and, and I was watching this show. And, and you ever watched a show that it was a little nerve wracking and it had some tense moments and you started to get a little bit more scared than you normally do? And, 
It was one of those moments for me. And, and all of a sudden, in, in the middle of this show, I, I just had this overwhelming sense that I was not by myself. And I, and I could feel like there was someone in the room watching me, and I got really scared, and I got really terrified, and, and, and I just was like, I, I just know somebody's in here with me. And, and, then, and then all of a sudden, when I, when I could feel that moment when somebody is there, I, in my peripheral vision, I, I saw this figure. And, I, and I, I could feel like they were right behind me, and I, and I, and I clenched up my fist, and, and I was like, I'm going to have to fight for my life right now. And, and I just said, on the count of three, I'm just going to turn around, I'm just going to start swinging, because I knew someone was in this room with me. And I just counted one, two, three. And the moment I said three, I just yelled, I said, ah! And I turned around, my fist clenched, ready to punch somebody in the face. And I looked, and there was no one there. It was just me. And I was so confused, and I, I looked around, and I was like, I could have swore there's somebody with me. And then all of a sudden, I, I felt it again. And then it was in that moment when I, I realized that, that the figure that I was terrified of was, was my hair. You see, I, I'd grown out my hair because I wanted to get braids. And, and my hair was so long that the figure and the person that was watching me was my curls. I was afraid of my own curls. And as ridiculous as that sounds, I, I think so many of us live our lives in the same way. Because if fear is a shadow, then it's important to note that faith is the sun. See, faith will remind you of who you truly are. See, faith will call out the best version of you. See, faith will pull out all of the, the life that fear is stealing from you. You see, and this is the moment right now where we have to declare and decide that we will be people of faith rather than people of fear. And if we continue in this passage, I love what happens in verse 30. That it says, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. See, why this moment is essential is because there's some times in our lives where you know what we have to do? We have to look fear in the face and say, Shut up. See, when Caleb silences everyone who's coming to bring dissension. It, it's as if there was a voice inside of him that was declaring that faith has to be the bigger story here. See, Caleb saw the same giants there. See, Caleb saw the same obstacles there. He saw the same limitations, but, but what Caleb also saw was an opportunity. See, if you will allow it to be, fear can actually be the catalyst that launches you into an opportunity that you would have never had without it. See, an opportunity to elevate your humanity, an opportunity to elevate your servanthood, an opportunity to elevate your courage. See, I think a lot of us, we pray that God will remove the fear, but if he removes the fear, he also removes the opportunity for courage. And I love Caleb's posture here is he, he says, we should go. See, what is it that's happening in your life right now that, that you need somebody to whisper? Maybe you need somebody to scream, you should go. Maybe it's a new job that you need to step into, you should go. See, maybe it's a, it's a new relationship that you've been afraid of, see, you should go. Maybe it's a new calling, maybe, maybe it's a new pursuit. See, I don't know what your should go is, but I know that there's a faith that is waiting for you to step into it, but do you have the courage to say yes? And then in verse 31, it says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. So when we're talking about this conversation between fear and faith, there's another question that we have to ask ourselves. And, and the question is this, is what are you filling yourself up with? Because when you live a life of fear, you're filling yourself up with lies. But when you live a life of faith, you're filling yourself up with trust. 
You see, when, when Caleb notices that the land is there for the taking, see, what he's full of in this moment is he's full of trust. He, he's knowing that God had told them that this land belonged to them. So he's not focusing on the giants. He's not focusing on the fortified walls. What he's focusing on is the voice of God. And it's the same voice that, that told them that there's a land that's waiting for you. But it's a land that will not be simply given to you. It's a land that you must step into. So what are you filled up with? What are you allowing to be poured into your life? What what is the material that you are stepping into your future with? Is it one where you're letting other people manipulate the truth and feed you lies and, and have you focus on the negative? Or do you have people in your life that are reminding you of who you truly are, that are reminding you of the future that is waiting you, that are reminding you that there's a land that has been promised to you. See, God is always one who's calling us into the new. He's always the one that when we invite him close, he may not eliminate the obstacles, but what he does do is he increases our faith. He increases our courage. That it's simply through proximity to him where our most courageous self will always be unleashed. See, when I choose to live a life that's less, it's always because I'm focusing on the wrong voice in my life. See, when I've allowed fear to consume me, it's because I'm listening to all the wrong voices. See, sometimes I'm listening to my voice when I should be listening to his voice. So what is the voice that's calling you in this moment? What's the voice that's trying to remind you of who you truly are. See, what happens to the Israelites is that they allow their fear to keep them from the promise that God had. That God says that because you didn't trust me, because you didn't believe that what I said would be done, I'm going to allow your narrative to come true. And what he does is he allows them to wander in the desert for 40 years because they focus on the problem and they didn't focus on the promise. See, now, I wonder how many of us are living in the desert even though we were built for the paradise. See, we were never created to live as wanderers. We are never created to to find ourselves in a place where, where we question the future that God has for us. See, if we find ourselves in a season of wandering, we have to know that it was our choice, it was not God's intention. And so God allows an entire generation to wander because that's the future that they chose. And then in Joshua chapter 2, I, I love how this story and this journey ends because one thing that i know is true about god is that his promises can always be trusted and we may not experience it in our time but we will experience it in his time so in joshua chapter 2 verse 23 we, we pick up in this moment where another group of spies had gone in to look at the land to observe and to to verify if it was time for Israel to step in. And, and in verse 23, here's what they tell us. It says, then the two men started back. They went down out of the hills. They forded the river and came back to Joshua, son of Nun, and told him everything that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, the Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. See, I love this moment right here. It's so essential because the promise was still there. The land was still there. See, what you need to understand is that nothing had changed in this circumstance. See, nothing had changed in what they stepped into. Nothing had changed in what their eyes had seen. The giants were still there. The walls were still there. The city was still there. The warriors were still there. But what's different 
was their perspective. All of a sudden, they look and they said, the people are melting in fear because of us. See, they no longer had chosen to be full of fear. They made a shift as a people that, that they would now be full of faith. See, the last question that, that you have to ask yourself when we're talking about whether I'm becoming a person of fear or a person of faith is, is what is moving you? See, what, what is the gravitational pull of your life that is jettisoning you forward? It, it, is it this place where, where, where you are deciding that you're not going to be fueled by doubts? Because that's what fear does but you're going to be fueled by confidence because that is what faith does. So when you choose a life of faith, when, when you orient your life around the person of Jesus, when you, when you realign yourself in his presence and, and when you're informed by his voice, all of a sudden you discover that there's a new you that has been lying in waiting. And you're no longer known by your fears and you're no longer living a life filled with insecurities, but, but you step into the life that you were created to live, the life that's full of confidence, the life that's full of faith, the life that's full of promise. See, there's a promise that I know awaits every single one of us. And sometimes that promise and sometimes that life is only going to be found on the other side of our fears. And I think it's time that we decided that the voice of faith will be the one that we listen to and that we would fuel our lives with his courage and we would become who we were always destined to be. See, I have been afraid for far too long. I stand here in this moment absolutely terrified. I am terrified of you, terrified of, of whether I have something relevant to say and something important to say. I, I, I live my life with fears that consume me all around. And, but there's moments in my life when I have decided that, that I'm not going to simply ignore the voice of fear. But I'm just going to tune my ears into the frequency of God and, and I'm going to say yes to that voice of faith. So I remember one of the pivotal moments in my life as I was actually invited to go on a trip with Pastor Irwin and, and he was speaking to the Green Bay Packers and I'm a big sports fan and he invited me to come along and, and just be there with him. I said yes. So I book my flight, and it's like a 6 a.m. flight, and I, and I go, and I land. And the moment I land, I, I have this email from a representative of the Packers, and he said, hey, when you get a second, can you send me your bio? And I didn't know why he wanted my bio, because I'm just there hanging with Pastor Irwin, but I said, sure, that sounds great. I'll send a bio. Why not? So I wrote up some stuff, and I sent it to him, and I was like, yeah, I get to send my bio. And, and then it was a layover, and then I landed in... Green Bay, and, and when I landed there, I had another email from him. Hey, when you get a chance, can you tell me what verses you're going to share? And when he asked what verse I was going to share, I was confused again, because I'm just there with Pastor Irwin. I'm not going to share any voice, verses. And, and so I texted him, and I said, hey, I, I'm not going to share anything. Well, you should ask Pastor Irwin for his verses. And he responds back, and he, he says, oh, you didn't hear. And that was the moment he had his number on the bottom of his email, and I called him, and I, and I said, I, I didn't hear what? He said, you didn't hear Pastor Irwin didn't make it. And I said, what do you mean he didn't make it? He said, no, there's a polar vortex and this massive storm, and every flight in L.A. to Chicago and to Wisconsin and to Michigan was canceled, and he couldn't get there. And he, so he said, don't worry. He's like, my guy Joe is there, and he can speak. And it was about that moment when, when my heart is supposed to be at this point portion of my body, it, it sunk down to the bottom of my feet. And I said, what do you, what do you mean? I, I, I'm not here to speak. I don't have anything to say. And then he said, he said, you got it. So we'll see you in like a couple hours. And I, and I, I cannot communicate to you the, the level of fear 
and anxiety and worry that consume me in this moment. Because it, I, I wasn't somebody who loved to talk and he loved to communicate. I wasn't somebody who it came natural to, as, as you can tell as I'm talking now. Or, this was something that, that was not something that was in the cards for me. And I was absolutely terrified. And, and I can tell you that, that everything in me wanted, wanted to hop back on a flight and go back to L.A. And if I could have gotten a flight out of Wisconsin to L.A., I probably would have. But because of this storm, I was stuck. And I, I was terrified. And I could resonate with the Israelites, right? Because the Green Bay Packers is a professional football team. And these guys are giants. These guys are like the Nephilim. They must be descendants of them. And, and me, I'm supposed to come and talk to them? I was terrified. And I remember I got to the hotel and, and, and I was ready to make up an excuse that I couldn't do it. I was sick. You have to find somebody else. And, and I was taken back to a moment years earlier when, when I felt like God had called me to give my life on behalf of others and, and to serve others in this moment where I was so consumed with fear. And, and I was taken back to this moment when God said, I promised you that if you would just say yes, I'll meet you every time. See, and I had a choice to make. I had a choice that I had to focus on the fear and the problem, or I had to focus on the faith and the promise. And in that moment, I, I just had, took a deep breath and I said, God, sometimes I don't understand it. Sometimes I don't even want it. But God, I, one thing I know is true is that I always want to say yes to your voice. So I went and I spoke. And whatever happened in that room is between me and the Green Bay Packers. But, but what I can tell you in that moment is there was a shift in me. Is that I made a decision in that moment that I would remember that the promises of God can always be trusted and that God will always meet us on the other side of our fears. And I, I wonder for you right now, I, I wonder in this moment, what is the thing that you have said no to? Not because God didn't promise it, but because you are afraid of it. See, sometimes, we're afraid of the successes that God calls us to. And sometimes we're, we're afraid of, of the future that God has for us. And I wonder for you right now, what's the thing that you know God has told you would be done and the thing that God has told you was waiting for you, but you have allowed fear to paralyze you. What I'm here to tell you right now is it's time to let your faith catalyze you. And for some of you right now, the most important decision that you need to make is one that is filled with fear because some of you are afraid of what it's going to cost you to give your life to Jesus. But what I'm here to tell you is that the reward for that decision will always be greater than the cost of that choice. And so if that's you right now and, and you know that this is your moment, your time, to say yes to Jesus, that you have let fear consume you for far too long, but you're ready to cross over the line of faith. And I just want to lead you in a prayer right now. All you got to do is say these words. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. That's it. And it's with that choice and with that decision that you have stepped into the promise that God always had in mind for you. Jesus, I give you my life. Man, there's no greater decision that I've ever made because it's that decision that informed every decision. And, and I'm so thankful that Jesus is the voice that will always unleash our most courageous self. Jesus, we thank you so much that you were the voice that's always calling us to more. And we pray for every single person right now, Jesus, that made a decision to trust you with their life. God, I pray that right now, you would just wrap them in your love. You would wrap them 
in your peace. You would wrap them in your joy. That you today would ignite in them a new faith worth living. We thank you so much, Jesus. You're the greatest gift that we have ever received. And we will follow you with all that we have. We ask all this in your name. Amen and amen.